You may be wondering, how can this guide benefit me? What do I get out of it? Your system is gonna be a little lighter. But what does a lighter system actually mean? First of all, it means you're gonna get a faster and cleaner system with less clutter and apps. You're also gonna gain much better performance both in programs and in games. You are also gonna be able to achieve much higher frame rates in games. We are also gonna trick the system's responsiveness. Last of all, we're gonna improve the efficiency. And for those of you who are on a laptop, you're gonna get a little bonus as well. That bonus is a longer lasting battery life. And with the video introduction out of the way, let's get to the prerequisites. The first thing we're going to do is very important. We're going to update our operating system to the latest version to ensure maximum compatibility and stability. Go down to the little windows icon, click it and hit the settings icon. You can also access settings by right clicking the windows icon, then navigate down to settings to enter the settings menu. From here, go to update and security, and under the first tab, Windows Update, hit check for updates. If there are any updates available, your system will automatically download the required files and update itself. If your system is up to date, there won't be any updates available, you should be absolutely fine. Are you still unsure whether you're on the latest update or not? You can also hit the view update history button and check for yourself. Type in control panel. Now, either click enter or click the control panel icon. Within the control panel, click system and security. Now, click system. And in system, click advanced system settings. In the system properties window, click system protection. Now, go ahead and click on the drive that has brackets system. And in most cases, that's also your C drive. Now, tap the button that says configure. Now, hit turn on system protection and set the slider to about 5%. Now, of course, click apply and OK. Now, hit the button that says create and give it a name. Now, hit create once more. And now, Windows will create a system restore point for you. Now, next up, you can just hit close. And finally, press OK. Now, let's move on to the next sequence. To start at sequence 2, head into Windows Settings. And now in here, go to System. Next up, head into Notifications and Actions. And all you gotta do in here is turn off those two. And below that, you can choose which apps are allowed to send you notifications. I'm gonna disable all of them, but that's completely personal preference. Now scroll up a bit and hit add or remove quick actions. Now once again, this is completely personal preference as well. Now we can go ahead and click the back button. And straight away head into the focus assist tab. Now make sure that focus assist is set to off. And right below where it says automatic rules, make sure everything is turned off as well. Next up is the power and sleep tab. And if you're on a desktop like I am, set sleep to never. And if you're on a laptop, you can choose whatever you like. Next, we're gonna head into storage. And in here, make sure that the storage sense is set to the off position. Now, if you were to keep storage sense on the on position, Windows might delete your files and stuff without you knowing in the background. I certainly don't like that, so uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep it off. Now, uh, next up, we're gonna head into tablet mode. Now, if you were to be on a Windows tablet, make sure you set your own settings in here. Now, if you're on a desktop like I am, pretty much just copy my settings. Now, we're gonna head into multitasking. Now, this is all personal preference, but I'm on one screen only, so these snap features are pretty cool. But if you're on a dual monitor setup, you might want to turn these off as they're quite annoying sometimes. Right below where it says virtual desktop, so make sure that's set to only the desktop I'm using. If, of course, you're not using this feature. After that, we're gonna head into shared experiences and turn this off. Then head into clipboard and turn off clipboard history. Now, as a final destination, we're gonna head into remote desktop. And in here, make sure that enable remote desktop is set to off. Now press this home icon and let's move on. For this next part, head into personalization, navigate to colors. In here, choose your preferred color. I chose red, 
scroll down a bit and under more options, consider turning off transparency effects. Personally, I'd like to color my tile bars, as you can see here. And now the final step under the colors tab, turn on dark mode, which might on some devices increase battery life and system performance. And now head into the start tab, where we are pretty much gonna turn off everything. And now we're gonna press choose which folders appear on start. And in here I'd like to disable everything except settings to keep a more minimalistic look. Now click the back button and head into taskbar. Now scroll down a wee bit and head into turn system icons on or off. In here we're gonna turn off everything except clock, volume, network and power. Now jet back, scroll down and under people disable everything. And now finally we can click the home icon. This time we can head into apps, default apps, and under web browser, choose your preferred web browser, which in my case is Google Chrome. Now navigate to offline maps. And in here we're gonna click the delete all maps button, then delete all. Now head down to map updates and turn off automatically update maps. Now go into the startup tab, and in here you have the ability to dramatically lower your PC's startup time. And what I'd like you to do is to turn off the ones you're not using. And in my case, it's stuff like Java Update Scheduler and Windows Security. You'll most likely have a lot more apps than I do, but just turn off the ones you're not using. And now finally, go home. The Gaming tab is where we're headed next, so uh, go in there. And in here, turn off Game Bar, which is going to dramatically lower your stuttering in your games. Now head into the game mode tab, and game mode is kind of a hit and miss, for some people it works, for some it doesn't. You can kind of test this game mode to see if it works for you, and for me personally it doesn't, so uh, I'm just gonna keep it up. And now you can go ahead and click the home icon. Next up, head into the ease of access menu. On the display, we can find show desktop background image. And if your PC is performing insanely bad, you can turn this off for a slight performance boost. Now you can head all the way down to speech, turn off speech recognition. Next we're gonna head into keyboard, and in here we're literally gonna turn everything off. This is going to remove the small annoyances that might occur with your mouse or a keyboard while you're playing games or doing other tasks on your PC. And now, well, you can just click the home icon. The following steps are probably the most important ones in sequence 2, so uh, yeah, follow along as you head into the privacy tab. Under general, turn everything off, and under speech, turn off online speech recognition, inking and typing personalization off, diagnostics and feedback to basic, and further down you'll find feedback frequency which we're gonna set to never. And don't forget to delete the diagnostic data. Now head into activity history, untick that one, and also clear activity history. Now onto location, and in here turn off location access. And now on the microphone, always set this to on. Some of you might have had an issue where your mic doesn't work, and in some cases it's because it's turned off in here, so please make sure this is set to on to prevent any issues. Now let's head into notifications and make sure this is turned on. And the rest is basically personal preference until you reach other devices. Which we're gonna set to off. Go under background application and set that to off as well. And now onto app diagnostics which we're gonna set to off also. And the last four tabs which happen to be documents, pictures, videos and file system. All of which we're gonna set to the on position. And now, we're gonna click the home icon. Finally, we're gonna head into update and security. And under the windows tab, hit advanced options. In here, make sure that everything is set to off as this will prevent windows from restarting and updating itself out of the blue without your consent. Now, we're gonna head down to delivery optimization and finally turn it off. Go back, go back once again and now we're actually done with sequence 2, so uh, yeah, exit out. 
Let's start our sequence 3 by going down to the little search icon, type in control panel, and you can either click it or hit enter. In the control panel, go to system and security, and in here go to system, and finally go to advanced system settings. Under the advanced tab, in the performance category, click settings. In here, we're going to make our own custom settings, which is going to improve system performance and RAM management. I'll have my own custom settings on the screen now, which you can replicate and apply to your own PC. We're going to disable everything except animate controls and elements inside windows, animate windows when minimizing and maximizing, show shadows on the windows, show thumbnails instead of icons, show translucent selection rectangle, show window contents while dragging, and finally smooth edges of screen fronts. Now that we have applied the optimal settings, let's head into the advanced tab. And on the virtual memory, hit change. Firstly, untick that one. In here, you can manage the virtual memory in your system. And virtual memory is essentially just an extension of your RAM. And if you're, for example, gaming, your games might require a lot of power from your RAM. And if the RAM capacity is being exceeded, your system can use a hard drive or a solid state drive as a RAM replacement or an extension, if you will. I have four drives. You might have one, you might have two, you might have ten drives. What I'm trying to say is it doesn't matter. And in here, you're just going to set everything to no paging file so that it says none here on all your drives. Now, select drive and hit no paging file and finally click set. Now select the rest of your drives and do the exact same thing. Now we're going to assign the virtual memory to the fastest drive on our system. Also SSDs are way faster than hard drives so take that into account when you choose what drives get to manage your virtual memory. And once again, the faster the drive, the faster the performance. So now click your fastest drive which in my case is an SSD. Then go down here where it says System Manage Size, click that and then finally click Set. Now tap OK and OK once again. And then apply. And in the same window click the Data Execution Prevention tab and make sure that the first one up here is ticked instead of the second one. Now hit OK. And from here, navigate to the Startup and Recovery, where we're going to click Settings. Now, untick Time to Display List of Operating Systems, and make sure that the default operating system is set to, you guessed it, Windows 10. Now, you can head down to OK. And now, finally, in here, go to the Remote tab, tap Advanced, untick that one, hit OK, and here, disable Remote Assistance. Now tap apply and hit OK. And hit restart later. Now go to the top and head back twice to the control panel homepage. And the next place we're going to is ease of access, ease of access center. And upon entering, you're probably gonna hear some weird voice. Don't be scared, it's just a narrator. Now uncheck this and that one. And in here, we can practically eliminate a lot of peripheral issues and inconsistencies. So, we scroll down and head into make the computer easier to see. Turn off high contrast. And in here, you can basically turn off everything you don't need. You are also presented with remove background images and turn off all unnecessary animations. And if your PC is very slow, you can turn on those two if needed. On the other hand, if your PC is running fine, keep these unticked as they make windows seem very dull without animations and backgrounds. Personally, I like these unticked, but that's just me. When you're done in here, hit apply and OK. Next one is make the keyboard easier to use. Head into setup mouse keys, untick that one and under other settings, set the numlock shortcut to off and disable the bottom one as well. Apply and OK. Setup stick keys is where we're going next. In here, untick whatever is ticked. 
hit apply and ok. Next let's dive into fill the keys setup. Scroll down to other settings, untick and untick. And apply plus ok. Now press ok. Next up is use text or visual alternatives for a sound. Everything up in here, set that to none, and once again, apply and OK. Finally, head into make touch and tablets easier to use. Set this one to none, and now, one last time, apply and OK. Now, head back to the control panel homepage, go to the search bar and type in mouse. Open it, and now go into point the options. Having enhanced point of precision ticked causes a lot of aim inconsistency when using a mouse because the mouse sensitivity speed is dynamic and not static, which in reality means your sensitivity speed will decrease and increase based on your mouse movements. Having said that, this feature is quite handy when using a trackpad, but ultimately turn enhanced point of precision off. This will heavily improve your aim in first person shooters and basically in any game. Now press apply and ok. And now you can finally close the control panel window. We start our head down to the search bar and type in the file explorer. You can either hit enter or of course click it. And at the top of the file explorer window click the view button. And over here on the right enable file name extensions. But how does this exactly improve system security? Let's say you were to download an image file, or at least you thought that it was an image file. Okay, so you've downloaded the file, and the file is called image.png. And in this scenario, we have file name extensions disabled. And you have this image file on your PC, and you're about to open it. But you don't know if it's a real .png file, or if it's, for example, an .exe file. And if it were to be a .exe file, it could be an application that would potentially be harmful to your PC. And we wouldn't really want that to happen now, would we? So uh, go ahead and enable that file name extensions. Also, if you go into the view tab again, you can also hit options. And at the bottom, there are also other privacy settings that you can configure. In this next and press sounds a new window will appear and in this window go to playback and in this playback menu i'd like to disable the sound devices that i'm not using so that i'm only getting sound through the audio devices that are essential to me now select your primary audio device and hit properties and in here click the advanced tab and under exclusive mode untick both configurations now under the default format, select the highest quality available to you. The reason I didn't choose the highest quality available to me is because I know that my audio device cannot output more than 48,000 Hz. Now go ahead and hit apply and then hit yes in this window. And now you can go into spatial sound. And in here just leave it off. Now finally press ok. And now at the top head into recording. And in here, we're gonna do the exact same thing. Select your primary recording device and go to Properties. Head straight into Advanced and under Exclusive Mode, disable both options. And now again, under Default Format, select the best option available for you. And as always, Apply and OK. And the last place we're headed is the Communication tab. And in here, select the option that says Do Nothing. One last time, apply and OK. Tap, head down to the search icon. Then type in percent, app data, percent. Now, click the file folder. Now in here, go to app data, and on the local, head into temp. The temp folder is essentially just the temporary files left by applications. And they can safely be deleted without any issues. So now, highlight all the files in the temp folder, right click, and hit delete. Although there might be some files left over, which is absolutely fine, because the next time you restart your PC, you can go back into the temp folder and delete the remaining files.
Now, exit out of the file explorer window, right click your recycle bin and hit empty recycle bin. And in the confirmation window, press yes. And now we can move on to sequence 4. Sequence 4 is without a doubt the most important part of the guide. I know this sounds scary, but we're going to be using scripts and register edits to massively improve the performance throughout our operating system. There is always a risk when playing with scripts and register stuff, but what we're going to be dealing with today has been thoroughly tested over many years and by a lot of different people on a variety of Windows machines. In short, you should feel quite comfortable doing the following. And also, I'll show you a couple of benchmarks at the end of the sequence as an example. You might also want to disable your antivirus as Windows scripts can often be detected as threats even though they are completely harmless towards your system. So firstly, we're gonna head into our internet browser and for your ease of use, you can just click the link in the description below. And once we arrive on the site, we're just gonna head down to the green button that says clone or download. Now click it and hit download zip. When the zip has been downloaded, open it and extract the content of it to your desktop. Now close your extraction tool and head down to the search bar where we'll type in PowerShell. Now right click the PowerShell and hit run as administrator. Now click yes in the confirmation window. Next up you'll be presented with this blue command prompt. Now drag this to the side so that you have some free space. Now open the folder containing the scripts that you just downloaded. Now drag the folder in the opposite direction of the PowerShell window. In this folder, right click the script name Windows 10 Debloater GUI.ps1 and now hit open with. Now in this window, select Notepad. And if Notepad doesn't show up in here, click the More Apps button where you should be able to find Notepad. Now click OK. And this window might seem very intimidating at first, but all you gotta do in here is hit Ctrl plus A to select everything in the Notepad window. Now proceed to right click on the text you just selected and hit Copy. Or you can just press Ctrl C. Now, when you've copied the text, close the notepad window and paste it in the PowerShell window. When it has been successfully pasted, simply just hit enter. Now, yet another window will open and in this window, under the bloat options, press remove all bloatware. The script will now run, as you can see, in the blue PowerShell window. And once it's done, it'll say finished all tasks. Now back in the Windows 10 debloated GUI, under optional changes slash fixes, I'd also like to disable Cortana as I don't need it along with PDF Takeover and OneDrive. Now click disable telemetry and tasks, wait for it to finish, and finally hit remove bloatware keys. You might also want to install .NET version 3.5 framework as a couple of games and all the programs might require it. Now when all your selected tasks have completed, close the Windows 10 debloater tool followed by Windows PowerShell. And yet again, head into your internet browser. And same as before, there will be links to these scripts in the description below. Now this page is pretty blank with only some text on it and all you gotta do is hit either Ctrl plus A or select all the text with your mouse. Now again hit Ctrl plus C or right click and press copy. When the script has been copied, exit out of your internet browser. Now open up File Explorer and head into your primary drive, which is the C drive by default. Unless you've changed it of course. Now in the root directory, right click, go to new, and click new folder. Now name the folder something you'll remember, such as dbloat. It doesn't matter what you call it, as long as it doesn't have any spaces in it. Now open the folder you just created, and in this folder, right click again, hit new, only this time, select new text document. 
Again, name this document something memorable and without spaces. Now at the end, where it says .txt, delete that and write .bat instead. After naming the document, hit enter, and in this window, hit yes. Now right click the .bat file you just created and hit edit. Now in here, press Ctrl plus V to paste the text you copied earlier. Now click file and save your document. Next, close the file explorer and the file itself. If your search button is somehow gone after running the previous script, go to your taskbar, then go to search, and hit show search icon. And now we're ready to run the script itself. So get down to the search icon and type in cmd. Now right click the command prompt and hit run as administrator. When the confirmation window jumps up, hit yes. A command from window will pop up and in this window, type in cd dot dot, which tells the command prompt to change directory, hence the name cd. Now hit enter. Now type in cd dot dot one more time, and at this point, we're in the root directory. Now yet again, type in cd, only this time, write the name of the folder you previously created, which in my case is dbload. And yet again, press enter on your keyboard. And now finally, type in the name of the .bat file you created, including the bat file extension at the end, which again, in my case, is dbloat.bat. Now, one last time, press enter to execute the script. And if a warning like this pops up, don't worry, it indicates that you have previously uninstalled OneDrive. Simply just press OK and let the script continue. Now the script is waiting for your final confirmation, which is to press any button on your keyboard. Your desktop will probably flash a few times, don't worry, it's the explorer that's being restarted. And now you can simply just exit out of the command prompt window. Now we're going to use some register scripts to increase network speed, utilize the highest available prioritization for our games and programs, the script we're going to use also includes tricks to increase system responsiveness and a lot more. Now head into your browser and the link to the registry script is of course available in the description below. And when you land on this web page in the top right corner, simply just hit the download button. If you want to know which scripts you're installing onto your PC, you can read what each individual command changes in the script itself. When the script package has been downloaded, extract it somewhere. I just chose the desktop as an example. Now right click the script and hit merge. And click yes in the confirmation window. Yet another confirmation window will open and again click yes. This next message indicates that the tweaks have been applied successfully. And now finally just hit ok. And by the time you're watching this video, the script might have been slightly altered as I will keep updating the script over time with new improvements and tweaks. So, let's head down to the search icon and type in control panel. Now click enter it and in the control panel search bar, type in power. And now click power options. In here, you'll have the option to choose between at least three different power plans. And the overall best power plan is balanced, hence the reason is the default setting. Now on the balanced power plan, hit change plan settings. And in here, click Change Advanced Power Settings. And now you'll be presented with a couple of settings that you can manage. And the first one is Hard Disk. And under Hard Disk, you'll find Turn Off Hard Disk after set minutes. Now, if you want the maximum performance straight away, leave it at zero. But note that setting it to zero will keep your hard disk turned on all the time, which can and probably will consume more electricity. If you want a more versatile solution, leave it at its default setting, which is 20. My recommendation and personal choice is 20. Next up is the wireless adapter settings. And in here, go to power saving mode and leave that at maximum performance. Now under PCI Express, link state power management, choose the setting that says off. 
By having it set to up, you should notice a slight improvement in system performance and response time, either straight away or the next time you reboot your machine. The exact same thing can be said about the next few settings under processor power management. The minimum processor state should be left at 5%. Any lower than 5% is pointless and any higher is a waste of electricity. So, 5%. Now you will not be able to see this next setting if you didn't apply the registry script in the previous step. This setting should be left at either 85% or lower if you're looking for battery life. And for the sake of performance, crank it up to 100% so that your CPU will utilize all its cores when needed. I recommend a setting of 100%. And the last setting, maximum processor state, leave that at 100%, no more, no less. Now press apply, followed by an OK. And now just close the control panel window. Pressure and click on the link I left below. When you get to this page, scroll down until you reach the download section. Here you'll have two installers to choose from. We're gonna use the standard one, so go ahead and download that. Now you'll be redirected to this page where you'll receive your installer within a few seconds. Now open it and hit yes in the confirmation window. Next up, click OK and accept the agreement. Then hit next, next again, and next one last time. And now finally, press install. When the installation has finished, tick launch PyBot anti-beacon and hit finish. This program will open up and in this window hit customize. Now under protection presets, select either recommended or full. I chose full, but you'll also have the option to customize it as you like. When you've chosen your preferred preset and customized your settings, hit apply. Now wait for it to complete, and when everything is done, simply just exit out of the program. In this next step, we're going to use the command prompt one last time. We're gonna free up some space on a system drive and it won't harm your system as long as you don't use the hibernation feature because that's the feature we'll be turning off. So go down to the search bar and type in CMD. Right click the command prompt and hit run as administrator. Now a confirmation window will open in which we're gonna click yes. In the command prompt window, paste the command that I left in the description below. It says power cfg slash h off. So now press enter. If you have any problems with this, you can always re-enable the feature by writing on at the end instead of off. Now just close the CMD window. Now this next step can be applied to all your games individually. You can try this on the games you play to see if it works or not. It really cannot do any harm to your system as it is a toggleable Windows feature. And remember again, this has to be applied to each individual game. So now, head into your file explorer and in here, navigate to one of your game folders. So on my computer, I'll go to my games drive, Steam, Steam apps, Common, and in this case, I'll use CSGO. Now in your game folder, Find the games.exe file, which again, in my case, it's csgo.exe. Now right click the games.exe file and navigate to properties. In here, go to the compatibility tab and under settings, tick disable full screen optimizations. I know it sounds odd, but having this ticked will most likely improve performance even when playing in full screen mode. Now click apply and after that, head into change high DPI settings and under high DPI scaling override, take the override feature and leave this at the setting named application. Now hit OK, apply and then OK one last time. And now proceed to close the file explorer window. As you can see, this is the before and after using the scripts and tweaks. I have done the benchmark on two different PCs and the results vary slightly. They have both been through the exact same procedure and the first machine has gained 6GB in storage and the second one has gained over 10GB. 
I've also tested the memory and CPU usage before and after, and as you can see, the CPU load has been reduced by 13%, and the memory usage has been reduced by a tremendous 24%. That means that your games and programs can now utilize the performance that we freed up by using the scripts and tweaks. And that's actually quite amazing. If nothing in this guide has help, you can always try to download and run the highly phrased Tron script, which you can find on their official Reddit page, and the link will of course be in the description below. Now, if you want more Windows customization, I can highly recommend the WinAreo Tweaker. This program will give you much more control over your system and all its wonderful features. Link below as always. If you're looking for a great antivirus solution for your machine, simply just do nothing and keep the Windows Defender, as it is, in most cases, the best option out there. If you're still paranoid and want to ensure the absolute maximum security for your system, you can always download Malwarebytes, which is a highly respected anti-malware solution. Link is in the description below. If you're experiencing any stutter or mouse inconsistencies, you can always try to disable the in-game overlays that most game-related softwares have, such as Discord and Steam. This will also increase your frame rate in some cases, but by disabling the in-game overlays, you might lose certain features. And that was it for this guide, and if you made it all the way to the end and found the video helpful, please leave a like down below, and consider subscribing if you loved it. Any feedback, disagreement, troubleshooting, etc. is always highly appreciated and can be left in the comment section below. I'll be taking a look at most if not all your comments and I'll try to be as helpful as I possibly can. And that was all for this video. See you in the future, someday, somewhere, goodbye for now.